Hey everybody, today I want to talk about aquarium lighting and in particular I want to talk about LEDs. And in particular about LEDs, I want to talk about the RGB LEDs or the red, green, blue LEDs. Uh, I got a comment a while ago that suggested that the red, green, blue type full spectrum LEDs were the best kind of LEDs you could use for your plants because they offered that full spectrum. And I want to talk about that, and I'm making those very deliberate quotes like that because there's a real big disconnect between the way our brains interpret the signals that are coming into our eyes versus what's actually happening in the real physical world. Our brains are really, really good at figuring out what color things are supposed to be. Now, color is really strange because color is a property of light, and light is some really strange stuff. So I'm going to try not to get too overly weird about this, but when we're talking about how our eyes perceive light, our eyes don't perceive color in the way a lot of people think they do. We don't see the blues or the reds or the greens, and we don't even see specific wavelengths. I know a lot of people understand that a color of light is really just a specific wavelength of light and how our brain interprets that wavelength determines what color it is, but it's not that cut and dry. We have sensors or receptors in our eyes that pick up long, medium, and short wavelengths. Now that's not specifically red, green, and blue, but red wavelengths are long wavelengths, green wavelengths are middle length wavelengths, and then the blue um, are very short wavelengths. So when the light is coming into our eyes, our eyes are picking up this sort of range of short wavelengths. So that's a variety of blue colors. And reds and greens are the same way. Our eyes are picking up different amounts of different bands of wavelengths, narrow, medium, and short. It takes all that information and it says, well, if we're getting this much short wavelength stimulation and we're getting this much long wave stimulation, then it must be this color we're seeing, and your brain puts all that together. What's going into your eyes is just simple variance on wavelengths of light. Now, when you get into the red, green, and blue LEDs, and I've probably already made this too complicated, but the RGB LEDs are producing three wavelengths of light. They're producing a very narrow band of red, they're producing a very narrow band of green, and a very narrow band of blue. And that's it. If you were to put a spectrograph or spectrometer, whatever the equipment is, and look at that, you would not see full spectrum light. That's what our brains are perceiving because it's getting an equal amount of long, medium, and short. And so our brains are interpreting all of the wavelengths of light are coming in, and we see that as white. Your plants don't. Your plants are receiving green, blue, and red light. That's all they're getting. There's, there's no yellows in there. There's no oranges in there. There's no variations of red. It's a very narrow band of red is hitting those plants. A very narrow band of green is hitting those plants. And a very narrow band of blue is hitting. And I'm talking like a 10 nanometer width variance on your wavelengths. It's a very narrow band of red, green, and blue that are hitting your plant. It's our brains that turn all of that information, however much is reflecting off of the, the plants. Um, again, uh, color is in the light. It's not on the plant itself. There is no green plant. A plant just has certain, or anything really, just has certain characteristics and properties that cause certain wavelengths of light to reflect off of them, while others scatter, some absorb, and it's all of that properties of whatever the material is that scatter all those wavelengths of light around and that's what goes into our eyes and then again our brains take all that information and put it into some kind of picture that we call sight and color and all that kind of stuff but from a point of view of your plants the RGB are not the best kind of lights you can put on them they're actually pretty much the worst kind of light you can put on them uh, except for maybe fluorescent lights. Some really poor quality fluorescent lighting might be a little worse than the RGB. At least with the RGB, you're getting some long, some medium, and some short, and that's kind of good enough. A lot of uh, lower light necessity plants, you know, a lot of plants that don't need a ton of light can do just fine on some red, green, and blue light. If you really want to get a full spectrum light, though, you've got to spend the money on the kind of LEDs, like the ones I have behind me, that 
layer phosphors and they layer multiple layers of phosphor and each phosphor creates a wavelength of light and by layering all those multiple layers it may reduce how much light is actually getting out because it's got to go through all those phosphors but the light that comes out is actually full spectrum and when you put that light under uh, an instrument to measure it you actually do see that whole arcing wave of all the different color spectrums you don't see a big spike in red a big spike in green and a big spike in blue you genuinely get the full spectrum of light and so lights like these not only make everything visually look better because your brain's not having to piece together information it really is receiving all those full spectrums of wavelengths your plants are also getting all the full spectrum of wavelengths so a good quality LED is, in my opinion, is worth spending the extra couple of bucks on it. And again, these are just Cree uh, LEDs that are meant for outdoor floodlight type use, but Cree makes an LED of such high quality now that they use these full spectrum LEDs, and these are 95 uh, CRR, 90 plus CRI, meaning that they are 90% accurate to a natural full spectrum uh, sunlight and that's just amazing that you can buy these kind of quality LEDs in virtually full spectrum you know 90% accurate to full spectrum the LED that I have above me that I have turned off is an older LED but it was some of that earlier Cree technology where they really were developing these 90 plus CRI lights so again if you really want a good full spectrum light the RGBs do not give you that, regardless of what people say, regardless of how people try to say, like, oh, it's, you know, all the colors are there and the wavelengths blend together, and, you know, that's not how that works at all. Your plants are getting red, green, and blue. It's your brain that is telling you all those colors are really there, and they're not. It's just red, green, and blue coming out of that. It's not producing any of those other colors. So your plants are limited to red, green, and blue. It's our brains that do the rest. So I hope that wasn't too confusing. Certainly leave your comments, questions, whatever. Uh, I can always talk about light because it's weird stuff. It's really fascinating. And, you know, it's what makes our aquariums look the way they look. And there's a lot, you know, there's a lot to be said about aquarium lighting. I talk and think about it a lot. So if you've got any questions, comments, whatever, go ahead and leave them down below. Uh, I'll do what I can to get back to you. So thanks for watching this one. I'll see you real soon in the next one.